This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a new video. Do you see photos with beautiful golden backlighting and think to yourself, why don't my photos look like that? I just end up with a shadowy silhouette. In this video, I'll show you the techniques and settings to use in order to get backlit shots like this. Don't forget to stay for my bonus tip where I'll show you what you need to do to get sun stars, like in this photo of mine. My name is Simon Dantremont and I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for wildlife and nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. So what is natural backlighting anyway? This is when the sun is behind your subject and you're looking and shooting into the sun as you shoot. The result is that the part of your subject facing you, by definition, is in the shade. This is helpful in many ways, as the light is softer and there aren't any shadows on your subject. There are a few important things to notice to get the best effect from backlighting. One, backlighting is best when the sun is low. It's less harsh as it needs to go through more atmosphere to reach your camera and sensor. The atmosphere scatters shorter wavelength like blue colors, leaving beautiful red and orange colors. This reduces the dynamic range of the scene and makes it easier to capture brighter tones without blowing out your highlights. Two, the fluffier or furrier your subject, the more rim light you'll get around your subject. This adds a super nice effect that just looks artistic and glamorous. So long hair is great for portraits and fuzzy or furry subjects look great for wildlife shots. Think baby chicks and furry animals for the latter. This rim light comes from the sunlight that is able to partially pierce the edges of your subject and provide a sort of halo around your subject. Three, when it comes to rim light, the darker the background, the better. Against a dark background, any highlights on the edges of your subject make a stark contrast and are more easily visible. Against a bright background, highlights are lost as it's bright tone against bright tone. When you can, position yourself so that the background is dark behind your subject the effect of backlighting and rim lighting will be intensified. Fourth, if your subject has translucent elements like the wings of a bird or a sheer dress, the light going through it will make a beautiful effect. The earlier tip about a dark background applies here too, helping it stand out, like in this photo of mine. And five, your photo will often have less contrast when shooting into the sun as the light will flood the lens and stray rays of light will end up like flare on the sensor. Lens flare isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'd call it a feature rather than a problem. Used well, it can be very pretty. The trick here is to control it and use it smartly. On one end of the spectrum, if you move so that the sun's rays are not very prominent in your lens, you'll lose the backlit effect. On the other hand, if you place an overly bright sun so that it shines directly into your lens, you'll wash out the scene and lose your subject. The trick is to experiment between the two and get the look that's just right for your photo. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. As photographers, it's important for us to have a presence online that's more than just our social media, which is often just a combination of our work and our personal lives and isn't organized nor presented in the best way. Viewing our beautiful detailed images on a phone isn't doing them justice for all the hard work that you put into it. That's where our website comes in. I designed my own website with Squarespace and it was a breeze. There are templates for you to choose from to make it easy, but you can also customize pages with text, photos, videos, links. Galleries are a great way to show off your photos and you can sell them in your own online store. You can take payments by credit cards or PayPal, you can send invoices and even accept international payments. When I added a wildlife photography course to my offerings, adding a page to my website was easy and I was able to customize it to look just the way I wanted. You can even offer memberships to exclusive pages on your website, or do what I do, offer people a free download in return for signing up to my email list. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Simon to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So now I've covered what backlighting does, let's look at how to capture this in the field. Here are some tips to help you master the situation. When the sun is too high, you get a silhouette instead of a nicely backlit photo. That's because there's too much dynamic range in the scene and if you increase the brightness of the exposure until the subject is well illuminated, the sky is totally blown out. As such, it's best for the sun to be low on the horizon. About 20 degrees above the horizon or less is best. 
How can you tell what 20 degrees is? Your hand width is about 10 degrees, so two hand widths or less should do it. Now let's try to get the exposure right. As always, avoid blown out areas if they're important parts of your scene. Expose your photo so that the highlights aren't touching the right hand side of the histogram. That may leave your photo on the dark side though. That's okay. It's easier to recover shadowy areas and a subject that's too dark than blown out highlights. If you have sky in your backlit shot, you may end up with two peaks in your histogram. One for the brighter sky and another for your areas in the shade. That's perfectly okay. Just try to keep the sky peak from touching the right hand side. Now if your background is dark and you shoot in any of the semi-automatic modes like shutter or aperture priority or manual with auto ISO, the dark scene may make your camera raise the brightness of the already dark looking exposure. This risks blowing out the bright areas like the rim light in your photo. I like to use exposure compensation in these situations to take a little off the exposure, like two thirds of a stop to protect my highlights. That being said, don't overly worry if a thin strip of rim light is overexposed, like in these photos of mine. It doesn't take anything away from the shot, even though it's technically pure white. If you shoot in raw, you'll have a bit more latitude to recover these in processing. Now as photographers, we don't always get to pick when we go out and shoot. If your situation and backlit light is still too bright and risks overexposure, what do you do? One option is to purposefully blow out your highlights in a technique called high key. That's where you make the background pure white on purpose and use it as an artistic effect. You expose for the subject and let the sky go white. You either end up with a silhouette or a subject that stands out as the main actor in your shot. Another option when the backlight is too harsh is to try and diffuse it by moving your position or moving the subject. Trees are a great diffuser of backlight and also provide some shade for your background to make it dark and make the backlighting pop. And finally, you can even put the sun directly behind your subject and try to get your subject to block the sun. Move around a bit to play with this effect to get it just right. By the way, I have a whole guide on shooting in backlit situations. Subscribe to my email list on my website and you can download the guide for free. Link to that in the description below. Also look me up on Instagram and Facebook. I almost always include a photography tip with every photo. Now that you have your settings figured out for your backlit situation, here's another important tip. And that's how to modulate the backlight. That is how do we adjust the amount of flare and the ratio of sun brightness to subject brightness? It's actually not using settings, it's using your feet. The best way to adjust the backlight effect is getting the angle of the light in the background just right. You do this by moving left or right. When the sun is too far to the left or to the right, you'll notice that you don't have much flare, but you also lose many of the attributes that make backlight great. As you adjust your position to have the sun closer behind your subject, the lens flare will increase. But there can be too much of a good thing. If there's too much direct sunlight into your lens, you'll completely wash out your scene and lose your subject in the glare. So the trick here is to move right and left and maybe up and down to get the right effect that you want. There's no perfect answer here. These are artistic choices that you need to make. But for what it's worth, I find that for wildlife, having the sun 10 or 20 degrees offset behind my subject gives a good balance of clarity on my subject and nice lens flare. And also note that there's another way to modulate the amount of flare, and that's shooting with or without a lens hood. With a lens hood on, it will reduce the amount of flare and show off more detail in your subject. If you leave it off, lens flares will be increased, which you can use artistically to get a certain look in your shot, dreamy and ethereal, like in this shot of mine. And I promised you a bonus tip for a special type of backlight, and that's how to get sun stars like this. This is actually caused by a phenomenon called diffraction from your aperture blades in your lens. And interestingly, lenses with different numbers of aperture blades will create sun stars with different numbers of rays. Making them are actually quite simple, but there are two winning conditions needed. One, you need to have a very small aperture in your lens, which would be a very large F number, F14, F16, or even F20. Note that image sharpness goes down at very high apertures, so avoid f22 or f32 for example. f16 is often a good compromise. I shot this one at f18 and underexposed it on purpose to give a nice artistic effect. The second needed condition is to partially block the sun with something in your shot, 
a rock, a tree, the horizon, or yes, a lighthouse. In this photo, I was able to get the sun blocked by the horizon and the lighthouse at the same time. And by placing the sun at the intersection of the two, I got this really neat effect. I've made several other videos on shooting in different lighting conditions, including poor light. If you want to learn more about that, see my video on that right here. If you think this video is deserving, please give it a like and it will help other photographers who are looking to improve their craft. And I hope that you can use these tips to go out and get your own unique and amazing photos. I know you can do it.